For the longest of time now, many of you have been begging me to check out one NPC weapon in particular. As so I have heard, for a pre-boss weapon, its damage potential is unironically quite good. And so today, after seeing it in action last week in Waffle Time's latest playthrough, I thought we'd finally explore the wondrous power that this weapon holds. Of course I'm talking about the paintball gun. Now, off the bat, I'm going to say this is something I've never previously used, but you know, we're all for discovering something new on the Socrates channel, so let's see if it can really help you out in those early stages of progression. Before we do jump into it though, if you enjoyed these weapon reviews, why not let YouTube know, as it truly helps out. Right then, let's see how you can get it. As mentioned, the paintball gun is indeed an NPC weapon drop, meaning similar to things like the Combat Wrench and Resonant Scepter, we will need to farm a friendly NPC to obtain it. And lucky for us, with the paintball gun shockingly dropping from the painter, seriously who would have thought that, you have a chance to obtain as early as pre-boss, with the painter's move-in requirement only consisting of you having 8 other NPCs already, which with a bit of min-maxing, should be achievable in your first few days of creating your new world. Right then, once you've given your painter a nice warm welcome, we need to kill him, and probably quite a lot. As with the paintball gun having a 10% drop rate, the classic lava pit of death may not be the best method for killing your painters quickly. So what about a bouncy boulder instead? Wait, no, that's just not worked at all. So, unless you want to build yourself something more permanent, I'd highly recommend crafting yourself a fly meal instead, which requires you to combine a gold or platinum broadsword with five stink bugs in honey. Once you've obtained it, you can very simply kill any NPC wherever you please with ease. And with a few deceased painters later, I got my beautiful paintball gun to drop. Okay, let's see what all this hype's about. From first impressions, the paintball gun just from a functionality standpoint already seems quite remarkable, firing a colourful stream of arching projectiles much faster than I expected. And the crazy part is, with a base damage of 12, this thing basically matches the mini shark off the bat something players would usually obtain a day or two later. The only real negatives to compare is the paint gun's inaccuracy of range, but really, this shouldn't be too much of an issue early on. Also, even if you get this thing after smashing some orbs in your evil biome, I found the Undertaker to actually deal around 25% less DPS, which is insane considering the significant amount more risk attached to obtaining that. Also, what I found even more crazy is how it about matches the damage of the combat wrench, a post skeletron NPC weapon dropped from the mechanic. Like, the painter is really giving us the best of the best here. Oh, and something I completely forgot to mention which I think takes the paintball gun to another level is the fact it has baked in infinite ammo. Like, not even post Moonlord ranged weapons do this, so just fire this thing to your heart's content. However though, one little snag attached to this seemingly top tier perk is the fact you're stuck with this ammo forever, meaning that from a scaling point of view, the mini shark will very quickly leave the paint gun for dead with silver bullets, now dealing over 200 DPS on multiple targets. But you know, realistically this isn't going to be for a while, so let's see what it can do for you when you've got it. And again, if the dummy test already wasn't evidence of its performance, I found it to take down this group of slimes at identical speed to that of the mini shark, as it does seem to deal about double damage, but with half the fire rate. And speaking of that double base damage, I'm sure this will only affect very few scenarios, but I found the paintball to perform better against tankier targets, as that higher damage can bypass defense much easily. This could all be within the margin of error though. So, now we've understood whereabouts this weapon is placed in terms of performance, what will you actually use it for in a playthrough? And well, if I were to obtain this thing as early as you can obtain it, it's just going to make your whole early pre mode experience a hell of a lot easier, giving you not only that mini shark offense, but also no ammunition to keep topping up every few nights. So, if you were to try and defeat the Eye of Cthulhu with this thing, how would you do? Well, if it worked for Waffle Time, it worked for me. And if anything, with some damage reforges and a good prefix, I found this to actually be complete overkill for this fight, which once again, is crazy for a pre-boss weapon. So I mean, how much further can it take you? And well, this really depends on what other weapons you've got, because if you don't have any setup for a Jester Arrow Eater of World Cheese, a paintball gun will do you just fine. And I suppose if you wanted to take it to the next level, you can technically use it to defeat Skeletron. Just be aware that there are far better options available at this point though. And when you do get into your dungeon, while having a full auto gun at your fingertips is still great, by just obtaining the handgun from a chest, you've got an automatic upgrade. 
So then, we retire the pink gun at about this point. But you know, this thing really has impressed me today, as although its stats do find themselves on the lower end of things, it's more so much the later game usability of this weapon that makes me want to go for it. So I guess, if you've got a painter wandering around, I really don't see a reason not to go and ruin his day. This has been Zorkatees, and I'll see you in the next one.